Super Bowl 54 in Miami. Is Ryan Tannehill going to play in Miami? Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. What if you want tickets to attend that or NFL honors? You can launch the confetti cannon if your team wins a big game. Sounds pretty amazing. You can enter for a chance to win, submit a video or a photo of your favorite Super Bowl memory. Share it on Instagram or Twitter. Tag at NFL, whether you were at the game, at home, who knows. Just use the hashtag NFL 100 contest and hashtag your favorite team. And more information is at NFL.com slash 100 slash contest. You get to shoot the confetti can. It sounds like so much fun. Oh, it's going to be lit. Mm. Yeah. You shot a t-shirt cannon in Tampa. I did. I tried to make a field goal. I missed. Well for you. Yeah, not, not well. Well, oh, well, the true fact is they wet the T-shirt when you did it live. It's a long story. I rehearsed it. I missed everyone. Yeah. Then they wet them down without letting me know. And it flew like the wind. Uh, What's it going to be like when Anthony Ferkser is just covered uh, in confetti? Wow. wow. It's great. Harvard, did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Selva's out in the newsroom. Welcome to the show. And good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Kay. Good morning, fellas. Well, there is a chance Lamar Jackson's biggest hype man will not be available for Saturday's divisional showdown with the Titans. Ravens offensive coordinator Greg Roman calling running back Mark Ingram day-to-day with a calf injury. Now, it sidelined Ingram for Tuesdays and Wednesdays practices. He had what was characterized as a setback last week. Ingram initially suffered the injury against the Browns back on December 22nd. If Ingram can't go, it will be Gus Edwards getting a majority of the carries. Now, Ingram, not the only star player to miss practice time. Vikings wide receiver Stephon Diggs missing Tuesdays and Wednesdays sessions with an illness, although head coach Mike Zimmer says Diggs will be fine. As for wide receiver Adam Thielen, an ankle injury limited him in Wednesday's practice. Now, two of the most dynamic quarterbacks in the game are facing each other in Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. They're two of four players with a 100-plus career passer rating in the Super Bowl era, including the playoffs. Mahomes has long been impressed with Watson. Yeah, I mean, if you've watched Deshaun since college, and I'm sure even since high school, they're never out of a game. I mean, he's someone that can make big plays happen no matter what the scenario is, and he's not he's going to fight until the end. And so I, you know that going into the game, so you know that coming in as an offense or and as a defense and, and as a team, you have to make sure that you're on top of it all game long. It's going to be a 60-minute fight or even longer, whatever it takes. I mean, you have to make sure that you come in with that mentality that you're going to play your best football every single snap. A lot of respect there. Watson and Mahomes were born three days apart in September 1995, the closest age difference between opposing starting quarterbacks in a playoff matchup in the Super Bowl era. What I really want to hear are the thoughts of Nate and Schrags on Mahomes and Watson. I feel like that's a subject that hasn't really been mined. You guys really haven't been talking about that. I'll tell you, it was unplanned for it to go that way. <laughs> yeah, but we get I into love it, it a little bit on the show. Spirited. It's a point conversing. <laughs> Impromptu. Best. Nate wants to show Watson down 30. It gives him his best chance. Best chance ever. Thank <laughs> you so much, Selva. Uh, of course, yep. we're breaking down the games. We have Adam Thielen joining our show ahead yeah. of their divisional round yeah. matchup. So lots to talk about ahead of this weekend. But yesterday, we did hear from Mike McCarthy with a very confident Jerry Jones at his side as he was introduced as the Cowboys' new head coach. And with more on how things unfolded down in Dallas, you know, who we're going to, Jane Slater. Thanks, Kay. Well, Mike McCarthy hasn't won anything yet for the Cowboys, but he seemingly won over the Joneses following a meeting that started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday here at the Star in Frisco and then went well into the morning hours, 1 o'clock in the morning to be exact, following a dinner and drinks with the Jones family. As Jerry Jones described it, his son, Jerry Jones Jr., came across to him at the table and said, Dad, what are we waiting for? Steven is ready to rock. Jerry said he was concerned about the optics of such a rust decision and Jerry Jones Jr. reminded his father that he's never, ever been concerned about that. He said that there was this chemistry and bells went off for him. And then on that Jason Garrett situation, how that went down, well, Stephen Jones told me point blank that Jason knew exactly what they were going to do, that they were going to move on. And in fact, Jerry Jones even said that they told Jason Garrett that they were going to be interviewing Mike McCarthy, to which he said he was a pretty good guy. So it seems like things are now all on the level and buttoned up. What we don't know is what who, who and what the staff is going to be composed of. We'll hear about that in the weeks and months to come. Okay, back to you. Later, Slater, we'll see what happens with Jason Garrett, where he, where he will find himself next season. But 
The Cowboys aren't alone in the NFC East. Time for some would you rather. Two teams made big hires in that division this uh -huh. week. So if you were a head coach, would you rather be in Mike McCarthy's situation with the Cowboys or in Joe Judge's situation with the G-Men? I'm going to, you know, I know what I'm getting with Mike McCarthy, I think, and I think the Cowboys will be good next year, but when I used to watch Let's Make a Deal, I used to go for that curtain number three. I like the mystery choice, and sometimes it's like a dirty mop or a goat or something, yeah. but I'm going to go with this Joe Judge here. I feel like next year the Giants, they have to get better, and I think their roster will definitely be better. Cowboys have to win the Super Bowl next year, and I think that their roster is not going to be as good. I look at the number four pick for the Giants, and I think I'm going to roll with the guys in blue. I'm going to take that mystery curtain. Okay. No, I'm going with McCarthy and the Cowboys. I, I want to know what I'm going to get. You look at what they've been able to do over the last handful of years, three division titles. They have Dak Prescott. I'm pretty sure they're going to get that deal done. Ezekiel Elliott, regardless if you want to say that he's slightly overpaid, when he got his mind right, he still could be the best running back in that football. That contract's going to be tough. Man. Okay, that's fine, but tough, still, right? though. You're still a Dallas Cowboys head coach. Yeah. This is the storied franchise in the NFL worth $5.8 billion. Just having a star on your chest, mm -mm. whether it goes good or it goes bad, you're still good. You know, you're coaching. That, they're not that, partying. That, right? that star looks like <laughs> a target. That's how you now. got the job. When I uh, yeah, and also, Mike McCarthy was the king in Green Bay. There was no owner. It was Ted Thompson who didn't say two words to the media. So Mike McCarthy really controlled the message and controlled mm. the locker room. And Mike McCarthy knew what he was getting every day when he walked into the building. In Dallas, I, you know, he might want to control the message, but when Jerry Jones is giving a press conference for 25 minutes after a Mike McCarthy loss, that might be a little frustrating. So I would just say, situation I'm walking into, the giant situation, Joe Judge, Expectations are questionable. They, we know that he's going to be able to have a voice in the situation. Totally he's younger. He can kind of grow with this team. And I'm it's gonna, the Giants. And it's the Giants. Well, yeah, yeah. It's also New York. It's a place that I eats like you alive. That. I like low he's expectations. He's already with Aaron Judge. Overperform. You're, you're inheriting expectations. Uh, your star wide receiver is walking out the door, and you don't know what's going out there. Quarterback with the expectations and the pressure doesn't care about that. Neither do the bright lights. New York, yeah, you have to deal with the media. But I don't know. You expectations have, here. You have a lot of young cats on rookie contracts. Yeah. Door number three. Nate just wants to sleep at Jerry Jones' house. <laughs> you know. Come on, Nate. Come on. <laughs> you probably have already. <laughs> Nate, Nate met Jerry Jones and heard bells. That's a yeah, bell. That's right. <laughs> like at Jim Fee, with your thoughts. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the game I'm most excited about this weekend is Packers Seahawks. It's the last one on Let's Sunday go. because it's two of the most gifted passers in the NFL. I want to show you guys a couple plays here. Oh, this right, is here we go. Five. Russell scrambling to his left, throwing a dime to the corner of the end zone. Hit it! Oh, I mean, it takes five seconds to scramble. There he goes. Who does it go nice. to? Tyler Lockett. That's a Thursday night game uh, in the division. Is that Toe Drag Swag? That's the Toe Drag logo. Swag logo. Not to be outdone, though, Aaron Rodgers. Let's take you to that guy and that team oh, up against the Chiefs. Hostile bit. territory, fourth quarter. He's scrambling. <laughs> Fade away. Out of here. Oh, no. A touchdown to who? Jamal Adams, back of the end zone. So here's my question. We'll be breaking these two down all week. If these were the nominees for Pass of the Year, would you rather vote or would you vote for Russell Wilson or what you just saw Aaron Rodgers do? Deg ah! Degree of difficulty, I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, backing up, pressure in your face, fading away, almost a no-look pass, and he flicks it with half of the force that he can when he usually passes over his arm, over his shoulder. Yeah. I feel like degree of difficulty, I'm going Aaron Rodgers. I'm going Russell. Thursday night game against your rivals, the Rams. It helped decide the NFC West when it was all said and done. And that call was originally incomplete. They're like, there's no way his feet were in. They looked at it, and the catch is maybe the best catch of the year. I'm going Russell Wilson back of the end zone. Perfect pass and maybe the best catch of the season from Tyler Lockett. John Daly back in the day used to drop 10 balls on the sand bunker and say, I bet you I can make four of them. I bet mm. you I can chip in on four of them. Highly improbable. I don't think Russ or Rodgers... If they had 20 times, could make that throw a second time. And I'm going with Russ. I, I really, really am. I think if that thing is three inches the other direction, it's yeah. incomplete. I think Rodgers had at least seven or eight inches. Rodgers <laughs> doesn't even, Rodgers can't even get his hand up all the way to throw it and somehow throws it in the perfect Flicks it from spot. How does that happen? I thought for sure it was Rodgers. And now I think it might be Rodgers. Let's put that up on Twitter. Let's put that up on Twitter right. and see what the people think. More Good Morning Football on the way. Let's talk more about the Chiefs and the Texans, a hot topic here at the breakfast table. The Chiefs defense much improved. How do they handle and stop Deshaun Watson? And all the stars in the NFL will align mm. in a playoff match game. Oh, what's this?
Peter, you wanted to pick Kittle or Kelsey as a better tight end, so, so you have happy. about four I'm seconds. So happy we don't what do you mean? We do. Four seconds. Who do you like better? No. I'm